something beautiful is on its way to you. This is the experience of a lifetime, my dear friend. You want to give yourself this at all costs to your ego, your pride, and your fears. Love, it's everywhere. It's beautiful, it lives within, it doesn't need to be created. It is already there for you. We've hiked down three canyons and here we are. Let's shoot it, baby. I feel the funky chicken, the funky messiah. Yes! Search for yourself on your own. Go within yourself. Find it within your breath, within your very spirit. Mrs. Nixon is done. Now I want to do a little magic trick. A spiritual path brings us to a place in our life where we discover the diamond and we learn how to pull it out of the mud. It's all very interesting. The trouble with the spiritual path is that there is nothing in the physical world, this culture, or this society that will support it. We are interested in power, control. We want to be successful, beautiful, handsome, brilliant. And that none of those things, absolutely none of those things have anything to do with the spiritual path at all. <laughs> so that's why it's easy to maybe watch Aspire or read a book and then say, yeah, that's what I want to do. But when you really get down to it, it isn't anything that you will be supported in in this culture and society. And I'll bet you it's something that many of you don't want to do. Now, I know that sounds negative, but follow me for a moment. A spiritual path is about awakening to an inner part of ourself that we have negated years ago, that we left behind years ago. It is the part of us that is authentically at one with life. Jesus, Buddha, Lao Tzu, all the great masters, Mahavir, Krishna, they all talk about the inner body, the inner life. We are so deeply mesmerized. We are so hypnotized by the outer world, by what we read in the newspaper, what we see in advertisements, that we get seduced easily, so seduced that we have seduced ourselves away from our own life. <laughs> Jesus says in the Gospels, it's a very interesting statement he makes. He said, the body, it's more than raiment. Life is more than meat. Take no thought for your body and your life. Now, how many of you honestly sitting there very comfortable right now in your homes are sitting there going, yeah, I agree with that. That's a great philosophy. I don't think so. You're very concerned about your body. You're concerned how it looks, how it feels, what it's eating, how it functions. You're concerned about how much money you have to keep that body eating, functioning, and comfortable. You're not going to listen to a Jesus, not really. If you listen to some of the things that he had to say, they were outrageous. Lao Tzu is no better. Listen to what he says. Disgrace comes with having a body. I love that. You know, when I'm veering off track with myself or I'm having a difficult day, it's one of the things I like to remember. With a body comes disgrace. What does he mean by disgrace? He says, disgrace comes with concern about gain and loss, or right and wrong, good and bad. A spiritual practice, going through the fires of yourself and transcending into this thing called your life, has nothing to do with control and power. Listen to Jesus on the Mount, some of his greatest teachings. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst. Blessed are the poor in spirit. How many of you out there want to be poor in spirit? You wake up in the morning, you say, boy, I feel poor in spirit. It's going to be a great old day today. I don't think so. Americans want more. And that's why the spiritual path is so difficult for us. Because in our culture and in our society, we live in the entanglements of more is better. We think we're entitled to what we want at all costs to our own life. And that is what makes life difficult for us. I know what I'm saying to you sounds negative. But you know, in the beginning, a spiritual practice does look negative. It looks negative to our senses, to our value system, to our motives, to our idea of right and wrong, good and bad. 
and it gets very hurtful at times. We say, well, I don't know if I can do that. If there's any doubt in you as to whether or not you can do this practice, then you probably won't do it because it's easier just to chuck the practice than it is to stay focused in it and breathe your way through your limitations. Your mind is always trying to talk you out of your own life. Most people are zombies. They are living according to the value system of more is better for greed and entitlement. And they have missed their entire life. And when you try to bring a person back to the simple things, uh, the values of love, compassion, forgiveness, when you are not living for vengeance and rightness anymore, it looks weak. The position looks weak. You're not manipulating things to get what you want. And we become very vulnerable on the inside. Now it becomes difficult for us to live our life and to be happy because we're not sure if we're doing the right thing. Where's the profit? Where's the gain over the loss? How do I know if I'm right? Maybe I'm in a cult. Maybe they're going to control my mind. All of these thoughts that we have inside of ourselves that take us away from our heart and our soul. A true spiritual path is not here to make you religious or philosophical. It is to do one single thing. It is to bring you back to your life and your heart. Let me give you the litmus test for a spiritual practice, for following a spiritual path. It isn't about what philosophy you agree with or what philosophy you think you like or what religion is popular. It's about one basic thing. Can you accept, as Lao Tzu said, accepting disgrace willingly, which means to accept being unimportant. <laughs> You've spent your whole life trying to be important to someone and to yourself. All of your work to be important at work, all of your money to be important to the community or to show yourself that you're a successful, powerful person, or having people love you around you, even your own family. I mean, who among us wants to wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I accept being unimportant. I don't think so. That's not the Western culture. Hence, that's why a spiritual path is not really important to us. What does Lao Tzu mean when he says accept being unimportant? Don't be concerned about gain and loss. Well, he isn't talking about right and wrong, good and bad. He's talking about more than that. He's saying stop striving egotistically for the things that you think will make you feel good about yourself and start following the path that is really less traveled. It is the path of the heart. If you start following that path inside of your heart, it looks very foolish to the person who is living their life to be important. Important people want power, control. They want to be able to manipulate. That has nothing to do with a spiritual path. You don't find Jesus, Buddha, Lao Tzu, Mahavir, Krishna, any of the great masters that were ever awakened, trying to manipulate their students, their friends, their colleagues, their world, their life. None of that. They are offering to these people a sense of freedom. And freedom is only found through your spirit. It is only found in love. To look at myself as unimportant doesn't mean I degrade myself and go, well, I'm just a useless person on this planet, another appendage in the world. Rather, it is to see what part of me serves its greatest function. The human side, well, I like what Buddha said about our human side. He said it was like a, a dead log a painted stick puppet. That's how he described our human body and our human self. Kind of an interesting way to look at it. And he's right. No, the important part of us is your relationship with love, your relationship with your own spirit, your relationship with existence, with life, and how beautiful this all is. That is what is important. And as long as there is a Gregory Edward Penn filtering all of this beauty, I will never, ever be able to know it. You remember the old story about Lao Tzu? He used to take a walk in the morning with his friend, and they used to go silently, meditatively through this walk. Well, his friend had a friend from out of town that wanted to join them. So they walked a while, and finally the friend said only one word. He said, beautiful. 
Latsa didn't say anything. And when they got home, Latsa looked at his friend and said, don't bring him again. He talks too much. He does. There's no need for commentary. Why do I need to comment about how beautiful this all is? <laughs> Who am I? What does it need? My recommendation, my recognition of its beauty. Beauty is held within ourselves. Beauty is something you feel deep inside. Beauty is who you are deep inside. And any commentary I make on it makes me lose that beauty. You've spent your whole life trying to be important to someone, mainly yourself. You've tried to convince yourself through success in business or marriage or children or whatever that you are an important person and that you are vital and that you're necessary and that you weren't a failure. There are none who fail most than those who succeed in doing the things that keep them very human. If you're going to live your life in a fruitful way, you're going to have to accept being unimportant, gain and loss, right and wrong. We're going to go join my students here in a few moments and we're going to do some meditations that maybe will help you have some insight into who you are. Your whole life has been spent trying and struggling with the idea of making something of yourself. Your parents probably wanted you to be successful, to go out and uh, make something of your life, do something with your life. Doing something with my life, what does that mean? Does that mean I make a million dollars? Does that mean I get everybody to like me? Does that mean I have everybody agree with me? Or does that mean maybe I find myself in spite of what other people think of me? Greg's approach, it depends on the person. If someone needs some prodding, he gives them prodding. If someone needs a little caring, he gives caring. It's whatever uh, each person needs, he just knows and gives it to them to help them. I've actually uh, becoming more aware of who I am, uh, more than who people think I am. It's the moments that are important. I mean, we miss them when we keep worrying about the future or worrying about the past. So here we are now and uh, enjoying the moments. I have a wonderful meditation to share with you on this program. It's called Trespasso. We use it a great deal at Asilomar retreats. And it's something that will build intimacy between you and your partner. Everyone wants a little intimacy in their life. In fact, we should have a lot of it. And if we're going to use our body as an instrument for our spirit, then this meditation is one of the most powerful, one of the most beautiful. You can do it with anyone in the world you want to be close to. Or if you just want to reconnect spirits and replenish each other. To me, it is better than sex. It is the ultimate achievement, the highest peak of consciousness with another person because you start to lose yourself in the breath with another person. I'm going to show it to you right now. I have two of my students and my friends here who are going to help us demonstrate this. Um, if you want to do this, oh, let's say two times a day with somebody that you care about or that you want to connect with, I think you'll find it very powerful. By the end of the week, you'll know them in a very different way. Okay, what they both do is they put their hands on each other's heart. Okay, the left hand on the heart and his left hand on her heart. The right hand is put over the top and this is going to be the mechanism for breathing. It's going to be a symbol of their breath. Chris, when his breath is out, his hand will be fully extended. Varsha's breath, when her breath is in, her hand will be back. So when Chris breathes in, Varsha's breathing out. And they're monitoring their breaths with each other simply by moving their hands. Now the key to this is they stay in a rhythm with each other through their breath while they look at each other's eyes. They're going to feel many different things. This meditation is multi-dimensional and it works at many different levels. Sometimes you feel it in the breath as you go back and forth. Sometimes you see it in each other's eyes and sometimes you feel it in each other's heart. What they are doing is just focusing their breath on going in and out. Looking at each other in the eyes, dropping their judgments, their analytical fears, their worries. And something between the two of them 
that is bigger than themselves starts to build just in their breathing. Let's just watch. As quiet and as simple as this meditation is, what is happening between them is unspoken. A new love begins to be born, a friendship, a kindness. This is a wonderful meditation to do if you're trying to reconnect with your partner. Or if you want to remember what friendship and love is really all about. This is a wonderful meditation to do before you go to bed at night. And if you've had a tough day, maybe with each other, this is a time to reconnect and feel each other's space again. To remember how much you love. You want to do this for about 10 to 15 minutes and you'll start to feel something very special happening. Okay, do a good hug. Give each other a little hug. This meditation is a very special one. It's done out of kindness. And you have to understand, it is the proper use of using your body, your heart, your soul, your breath, and your spirit to reach intimacy with love. Now you see each other in a different way and you see yourselves in a different way. Look, there are many different ways that people go about living their lives. Most of them are on the harsh level, the outer level. This is an inner level thing. Try it sometime. We're gonna take a break and we'll be right back. You know, I think this was the most important of all the series so far. To accept disgrace willingly. To accept that because you have a body, there is going to be moments where you begin to see that it brings about disgrace. What do I mean by that? Well, the body gets old, gets sick, it has its problems. And sometimes for us that seems like disgrace. It gets in the way of our life. But the body is there to help us in compassion. It is not our total identity. And once you understand your inner body, as much as you understand your outer body, things begin to change. Except being unimportant. Oh, I went to the store and I found all sorts of little magazines about our body. If you look at magazines, if you look at today's, well, the marketing of today, it's always about the body. How to make the body more powerful, huh? Yeah. Or how to make the body a little more glamorous. We need the glamour in there, don't we? Yeah, all the bodies in here are absolutely perfect. And to accept disgrace willingly means we let go of that idea. And then there's old age, huh? Nothing, nothing scares us more than getting old and watching our bodies disintegrate. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The truth of the matter is simply this. The body has nothing to do with who you are. If you've identified with your body, if that's who you think you are, then you're going to find that there is tremendous disgrace. But giving it up gracefully and beginning to see the light of your own inner body, your inner spirit, is the key to living. When you allow that to happen inside of you, many wonderful things begin to happen. Meditation brings us closer to our inner body, not our outer body. It isn't here to change the outer body's form. Sometimes we change the health with it a little bit, but basically, as Gautama became the Buddha, he realized that basically old age, illness, and death are the nature of the human body. So when you look at your human side, when you are working on your spiritual practice, really what you're doing is accepting being unimportant from a physical point of view. However you look, however you think you look, however people respond to how you look, whether you think it is positive or negative, believe me, it's changing every single moment. We are all getting older. I say throw into the fire the essence of what you care about as far as your body's concerned. Live from your spirit this week. Find a way to feel your spirit beyond what you think. 
and you will find a life that is much more meaningful. You are more than what your body gives to you. You are a spiritual being. Beyond that, nothing else matters. So practice the manner of your spirit. Accept being unimportant this week and find your spirit soaring. Thank you for being with us for this special edition of Aspire. Please forgive me, won't you? Namaste. We're glad you tuned in and watched Aspire this morning. If you would like a VHS copy of today's program to send to friends or relatives, we'd be glad to send it to you. Just give us a call at the number you see on your screen right now and we'll be happy to send you a copy right away. Everybody wants power. Here we go. <laughs> the life is more than raiment. I just screwed that up. It's the other way around and don't listen to a word I... I'll be back. I don't know. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Begin to see inside yourself what it is that makes love possible in you and get this fly off my... <laughs> <laughs> Can we? <laughs> I, the fly is like... <laughs> Gonna screw your talk up, Greg. You know, he never worked out. Probably could have worked out more. These kind of magazines make me shameful. And then there's this one. Boy, I tell you, we're not gonna throw... Now that's a body. I'm keeping this one.